Hi everyone. So beginning this week, we are going to be working with Python. And um, as I've mentioned a few times in class, uh, Python is sort of the final step in our upgrading of the tools that we're using to do data parsing and analysis. So just as with Microsoft Excel, um, we had pretty limited functionality and a relatively limited number of role, rows of data that we could work with efficiently and OpenRefine kind of increased that um, and solved some problems with trying to do basic data analysis um, in terms of getting an overview of our data set. Um, Python is going to be you know, kind of like another degree more powerful still, and it's going to let us actually pretty quickly deal with, um, for example, our entire month of September data from the city bike data, um, right? So that's a 325 megabyte file. We're going to be able to process that in, you know, a minute or two. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really kind of a step up, you know, as I've said also, it's not to suggest that these things are uh, that each one of these is replacing the previous tool. They're used for different things. Um, so Python is something that you will generally come to after doing some inspection in one of the other tools. Um, but once you know kind of what you're doing, you know, in the same way that in OpenRefine, uh, we use the macros, you know, once you kind of worked on, say, you know, 10,000 or 100,000 rows, and that developed a macro for you in the input-output area um, that you could then apply to subsequent subsets of the data. You know, in this case, once you've kind of worked out what you need to do on that first 10,000 or 100,000 rows, that could even just be translated into Python where you can actually just process the file in its entirety, um, usually in a matter of sort of several dozen seconds or maybe a couple of minutes at most, right? So again, you know, this is not substitutive. This is, these are complementary things that you're going to use for different parts of your analysis process depending on uh, the scope and volume of your data. <clears throat> So to work with Python, Python, to, just to be clear, is a programming language that lives on your computer. It does not generally have um, what we call a graphical user interface. So um, just the way that Microsoft Excel is, you know, kind of a, a soft piece of software that lives on your desktop and you can do things like control C and control V to copy and paste and, um, you know, you use your mouse <clears throat> and right clicking a lot to move things around and then we moved into OpenRefine which has its interface through the browser and that means that we don't do things like copy and paste with, with, with keyboard shortcuts um, but that browser interface is much lighter um, than having all of the, the, the sort of heavy-duty formatting stuff that Microsoft Excel does and that lets OpenRefine deal with more data. With Python, in a way it's going to seem almost invisible because we are going to write code um, in a programming window and then we're going to execute it with just a single line um, and generally we don't see anything happening um, and so what we tend to do is we tend to uh, quote unquote read files but the reading happens invisibly we as the user and or programmer never actually visually see the file that is being processed we don't see the processing taste take place um, but what we do is as that processing happens we write um, the results to an output file that we can then open and look at once the once it has finished. Um, so what we get again every time we kind of increase the power of what we're able to do with the computer, we decrease the the, the visual aspect of the interface, right? And that's just because you have the same amount of resources on your computer, um, but you're spending more of it on working with the data rather than producing something visual that you can see. Um, <clears throat> So to get started with this, we're going to use a program called Aptana Studio 3. Um, this, uh, you know, as I said, with the, as similar to OpenRefine, it is free, it is cross-platform. We are not, however, going to um, be working with this um, on your laptop. So I will just uh, stay, uh, you know, once again state that um, in this case you need to be working on the, the school computers. Again, not because it's impossible to configure, mostly just because it's actually quite challenging. Um, and depending on the operating system and the kind of computer you have, it can uh, be pretty finicky. Um, we just don't unfortunately have time to set it up for everybody. But it is on the school computers. Um, you can work it out. If you're interested in having it set up on your own computer, um, you're welcome to contact the um, the school's tech department or myself if you want to come by um, office hours we can work on that together um, but as far as in class is concerned and completing your assignments you should expect to do these on the lab computers okay so when we open up Aptana um, we get kind of this you know promo system whatever Aptana actually works with a lot of different programming languages it will work with JavaScript and HTML CSS 
um, you know, all kinds of sort of web and uh, development languages that you might be looking at. Um, but for us, what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to go to the, I, actually, let me see if I can shift this window so that you can actually see. Um, all right, well, it's a little hard to, ah, it's a little hard to see from here. Um, but I'm going to file and then I'm choosing uh, new from template and I'm choosing Python. This isn't really that significant. Um, uh, it's basically saying that I want to, it's asking about something called the Python interpreter. <coughs> this is basically so that it knows um, how to run the programs that I'm about to, uh, that I'm about to do. So I'm going to say quick autoconfig, hope that this works correctly. Uh, uh, actually, I'm not going to do that. Oh no, run in background. Let's see. Well, let's find out if that works. So this is always my first step. Um, I'm going to go to file and choose save as. I'm going to save this file. You can see it's been saved in some random temp location. So I'm just going to call this python test.py uh, and I'm going to come up to <coughs> my folder here. And I'm just going to start with the print statement. This is the canonical um, test uh, this is the canonical test that all programming languages is hello world. Um, print is the thing that creates output um, to our terminal window. Um, as you can see, the print, is appears, print appears in blue. That means that it's a, a built-in function. We, we sort of uh, will touch on those more in class. But again, you can think of a built-in function as basically something the computer already knows how to do. We don't have to give it specific instructions. And then if we look at the hello world and we see that it's both, it's kind of italicized and highlighted in green, it's also wrapped in double quotes. That's the formatting that it uses to indicate a string. So in order to just test out that this is working, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on this terminal window. Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. If you're on a Mac, there's actually a program called Terminal that works just the same way as this. And we'll go over a few shortcuts for this, but um, you can see that this is currently showing me, um, this is sort of showing my location in the file system. If I type ls, um, which just is a short uh, shortcut for list, um, and hit enter, it's going to sort of show me the folders that are available. So I can see here my desktop, which is where I saved, um, uh, which is where I saved my Python work folder. So now I'm going to use the command cd. Don't worry, we'll go over all of this in class and you'll have a reference, uh, which stands for change directory. And I'm going to start typing desktop. Really neat trick here. If I start typing the first few letters and I hit tab, it will auto-complete as long as the name is unique. And then I do my ls again. I see my Python work folder and I'm going to go Python work, whoops, Python work. And I hit ls and there's one thing in there. So now in order to run my Python uh, file, which again, all it does at this point is it will, if, if it's working correctly, it will spit back the words hello world at me. Um, the way that I test this is I just say, by the way, I want you to, to uh, interpret this. Literally, you can think of it, it's a language. Python is a programming language. It is interpreted um, by um, it, like a translator. So I say the translator to use is Python. And then I put in the name of the file. Uh, which in this case is python test.py. And if everything works as expected, then I get my hello world back. So this is a good sign. It means that, uh, you know, Python is functioning on my computer. Again, you won't really need to worry about whether or not it's functioning in the case of a lab computers. Um, but this is just a good thing to, as I said, to kind of get started and get going. So what we're going to do um, for this exercise is we're actually going to um, pull in uh, our entire September data set and we're going to do some of the transformations on it that we did um, with uh, that we did with Microsoft Excel and really open refine so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in the entire data set I'm going to make sure that I can process it all um, and then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to filter out and I'm going to create a subset of the that file that is just my start station ID right and again this is just sort of to experiment with it make sure it's working so I'm going to create a new file so again I'm going to file um, <clears throat> and actually it doesn't really matter um, which one I'm but I'm going to go to the file new from template again I'm going to choose save as and I'm going to um, choose CSV processing.py. Again, you can tell I'm just, this is, 
I'm just going through my uh, folders here, selecting where I want to be. And here I have this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, um, I'm going to put in this command called import CSV. Um, and the import command, again, you can see that it's blue. It means that it's a built-in function. And basically, uh, the way that I like to think of this is um, if I think of functions as, as like recipes, um, when I use import, it's basically saying, hey, pull in this set of recipes from this other cookbook, if you will. Um, and basically, the, the reasoning behind this is that there's a whole lot of different things that a programming language like Python can do. Um, <clears throat> You don't want every uh, every program that you create, right? Which, in a way, you can think of a program as its own composite recipe, um, right? It's a recipe that you are writing instead of the computer language uh, kind of knowing already. Um, I don't necessarily want to have every single thing available because it's going to take a really long time to load, right? So imagine if you like every time you went to write a recipe, you had to read every single other recipe, you know, in the universe basically before starting, right? That would be very time consuming, not very efficient. So instead what we're going to do is say, hey, look, <clears throat> you know, if I want to, um, uh, I want to use some of the recipes that are available in this, um, you know, in this cookbook that, that deals with CSVs, right? That deals with comma separated value files. And this has a bunch of features and functions that are gonna be really useful to me in dealing with those. So that's where my import statement comes from. The next thing that I'm gonna do, um, actually I'm gonna put it above here is, um, and this is a very important part. So when we're working with programming languages like Python, um, <clears throat> one thing that's nice is that it minimizes our need to have a separate text log file because there's something called commenting. So basically, um, commenting is exactly what it sounds like. It is text that you write that is human readable to you, but that the programming language and the computer will ignore, right? So it's not going to try to interpret them as code. Um, and the way that we signal this in Python is with this is with a hashtag, okay? And so if I put a hashtag, you can see how it's kind of light gray. Um, all of a sudden, the text is turned light gray. And so... Um, so what I'm going to ask all of you to do is basically you're going to write a synopsis, uh, we sometimes call this pseudocoding, um, of what your program is going to do right at the top of your file. Um, and the reason for this is that uh, we want to, it's just a very good way to keep track for yourself and for me of what is happening at each stage um, because there's a lot of variability in the way written and it can be very very confusing uh, for someone who didn't write a program to understand what that program is doing unless it is well commented so this is actually going to be the major basis for your grading is how well commented your code is um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to get started here and I'm going to say the plan for my program is to import the CSV library which I've already done uh, then the second thing I'm going to do is um, open my September city bike data file file name right so I have I don't have the file name on hand so I'm just putting in some sub some holder text for that um, and then I'm going to <coughs> let's see after I open that up I'm going to create a new file to write just my Start station ID rows to uh, start station ID 212. <coughs> I'm going to write all matching rows to the new file, and then I'm going to close all files. Okay. So that's my rough plan. Um, you'll see how this comes together uh, when we get started in the next video. All right, see you soon.